So sticking to my previous format, I'll try to discuss as many different point topics as quickly as I can. And um, the first one is going to be the, the recent parliament hearing or whatever you call it with EA and Epic Games. EA's testimony was straight out the door, very bad. They were talking in a very PR speed where they were just using their original statement, their original PR statements towards the public general public straight back to them which is problematic because it's very deflective it is very like avoiding the the problem where they just stick their fingers in their ears and say it doesn't exist it doesn't exist instead of actually addressing it and trying to avoid the issue or deflect the issue onto other different things in in claiming that it is not a real problem or situation and not actually addressing any other points with one of the infamous lines which i just found fucking hilarious because you could you could just slap that onto just about any of the points that ea made and it would just be it would be just as relevant where ea is like i'm not sure if that addresses your point and and they respond with yeah i'm not sure it is either but look we've got a lot to go through so let's just press on because you know the, the parliament you know they they, were, they saw through it immediately they weren't falling for their bullshit no no one really falls for it they just move on but like from ea's testimony there wasn't really much of substance there wasn't really much to be argued or to respond back to which is why i kind of for a few of them just laughed because it's like it was such a memeable and laughable video like, if you go back and watch it's fucking hilarious and i find it just so baffling that that was their testimony that that's all they had to say for themselves you know i did look back at it afterwards and find out that it's actually not illegal to lie to the uk parliament which i find very disturbing and i was quite surprised about it because you know i as i said i'm not very well hearsed in politics or the legal system however i i seem to get it mixed up with the court which is where i was thinking where you know because it is recognized as the official legal statement whenever you talk to them but the problem is you know it's, it's not illegal to lie so they very much could have built their argument whereas most people would build their argument upon a mountain of evidence they could build their argument upon a mound of bullshit and they really relied on those half truths where just about every lie they could come back and say well it's not really a lie because you see even though it's being very deceptive and i'd say oh, any half truth is a lie because you you're hiding more information withholding different information and pretending that you misinterpreted what they were referring to by an entirely different thing which they clearly don't know exists like for instance when epic games was talking about fortnite they were assuming that they knew that there's two different game major game modes in fortnite and that they were talking about only the battle royale version when they lied even though you know they're still a part of the same game they're still on the same game title and they still are both launchable within the exact same .exe they even both Fortnite so you know the, the question still connects to what they said yeah that, that's that's a whole thing that I haven't seen really brought up in how disturbed it is that like we've got to try and address a point that's completely like they could entirely build up because as as I said with um red herrings which they seem to base that argument off you can literally form an, uh, an entire argument like out of out of your fucking pull one out of your ass where you just build more and more red herrings into it and when you don't actually have an obligation to tell the truth it's very easy to do that which which is giving the cause for concern which Sid is presented when he says he doesn't think we're capable of winning which I find a bit concerning you know he, he still seemed interested in fighting I thought it was a bit of speech right his part to just make people feel like they have to be outspoken you know really fight hard to, to actually win or whatever but I am starting to think he may actually believe that considering that sort of bullshit and I'm a bit worried that he might actually be a bit right there but anyway to move on to the next topic this one's one that I'm not gonna try to say too much about because it's not a gaming topic it's um a youtuber etika I, I wasn't actually a um a viewer or a subscriber of his content you know I'm not really too interested in it I've never really checked it out I'm not even entirely sure what he used to do the reason I bring it up is because he's recently passed and it was all about depression. The guy seemed a little bit crazy, so he seems to be beyond, you know, my capabilities of yeah, both a bit of understanding as well as a bit of how to really address the issue. You know, you need further help for that. But, um, I mean, you would generally anyway for depression, but, you know, you should still lend out your hand for those in need, you know, if, you, if you're a friend or whatever. 
and you know, I, I wanted to take a minute to say, you know, depression is something serious that should be encouraged to talk about, not discouraged. Uh, whereas bullying is the only thing that I should be dis think should be discouraged, whether you think it's a joke or acceptable. Because of certain contexts or not, and that's something that's kind of double standardsy to me with bullying. You know, we say the all okay or none of it is. In, in terms of that shit. I also think that everything should be discussed, you know, discussion should be encouraged, not discouraged, which is something that I've stated a few times that I've always been in agreement with, which includes depression, suicide, anxiety, and politics, even if it extends to win games, and even though I disagree that they should be forced into such a discussion if they don't want to have it, then that's fine, but it should be a topic that we should openly and freely talk about you know rather than being scared to indulge in what i what i mainly wanted to bring up here is that his channel was apparently deleted and they've got a petition go on some of his fans to try and get it reinstated which i i honestly can't remember exactly if it was something tied to his suicide or just his last video or whatever but something he did violated youtube's terms of agreement and it just got his whole channel terminated which i find a bit disgusting considering how considering how small i am and how much i've already put into my channel I would absolutely hate for something to, like that to happen. So, uh, you know, if you're interested or whatever, there, there's the petition. I'll, I'll put it in the description if you want to go sign up or whatever. I don't know if it will actually do anything or matter, but I sure hope it would. Because, you know, YouTube can screw you over and just delete your channel one day. Something that you've spent hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars on, too. They can just up and go one day so that's a, a bit disheartening to some of us and the final one is that tim sweeney put out a statement saying that <sighs> epic is funding the cost of all kickstarter refunds resulting from shenmue 3's move to the epic game store so that refunds won't reduce wise net development funding which i think is one of the developers or whatever and they've kind of said you know not just because i think he said something else in the thread because it's kind of a thread saying that this is going to apply to all kickstarter programs which gives the concern both to epic epic store exclusives and to kickstarters i mean it's something that makes him look very good to um you know to to developers but it's something that also is very bad just for kickstarters because it's like kickstarters you're never going to get anywhere if if people don't trust or believe you at the beginning of when you're selling it. So if people know about this now, they're, they're going to have a lot harder time trusting people because like just about every store, like every Kickstarter has said, you know, they're going to sell to Steam. I mean, some of them it's like, you know, Epic didn't exist when they started. So that's a, a bit different, but it's not like they're selling to both. I mean, how one of the developers um, said that you can only sell like when you sign a deal to sell to Epic, you, you sign it saying that you won't, you can sell it anywhere else, but you won't sell it to Steam. Because, you know, it's kind of a bit crazy against Steam or some shit. And my problem with this is, it's not so much what they're doing for devs, because I think that's kind of good. You know, I mean, they've already taken so much money from them for the deal that it's not that surprising that they'd be willing to pitch in a bit more just to cut their refunds. But my problem with this is the fact that they're kind of, Epic is kind of pinning um, the consumer against developers. And as I've said before, I think developers and consumers are the two closest in and out of the industry that are connected together. Whereas, you know, like, consumers aren't going to be that close to stockholders or fucking publishers, are they? So I find it a bit disturbing when something that's originally been a system of, you know, like, you you work to, with your consumer to sell to them and they, in turn, help you by funding you to keep you living, to keep your development cycle going for, for future project and projects and so forth. It, it's a friendly benefit, you know, it's, it's a trade system that we have in place. That's why our whole cultures or the entire world runs on the cycle and the flow of money. That, that's, that's the whole point of a trade system. That's why countries have a trade system in place, you know. So, so people are working to get money that they can use to pay for food and just repeat the cycle of helping one another. Because people aren't going to do it out of the goodwill of their own heart. So I, I just find it a bit um, 
disturbing that they kind of doing more and more things which is just pinning the consumer against developers and the developers against consumers where everyone's going to either depending on who you are you're going to either see epic as some sort of god that's out to help you every way or as some sort of satanist the demon devil person that's just out to fuck you over as many ways and places that you can like how they pretty much just break GDPR with their lack of privacy policy which is my main reason for saying I'm never gonna get Epic Store because it's just I actually care about my privacy you know like I'm I'm a very upfront and direct person you know I'm I don't mind too much of what gets out but I want it to be at my own choice of putting that out there it's not just something that I want people to just take the information for themselves from you know harvesting my computer or whatever you would call it you know like i don't want my ip address to suddenly scanned one day you know so I'm, I'm not about that i'm not willing to support that but i i just find it annoying because you know it used to be a you know there's still always going to be people that hate the um developers or whatever they're against them but generally i want it to be more of a i don't want to say a collaborative thing but you know we're, we're trying to work together you know just it does seem kind of like expectation versus reality kind of thing but it's, it's still a bit annoying how epic sees things like they feel very warped in how they view things i mean they're very competitive and that's kind of to be expected when you're fighting to be a storefront out there and you kind of have to be but it's still kind of crazy how they're doing it not entirely in a normal way i would say they're very um aggressive not entirely ineffective either mind you which is the bit that i find concerning suicide